Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to How to Loop in Dead by Daylight. This new video series is going to get specific to maps so that I can go more in depth on little details that I wouldn't be able to cover in a video where I'm including multiple maps or multiple types of tiles. This way I can cover, again, all the details of the map that I know of and we can go from there. I get requests mostly for indoor maps, so the first map we're going to cover is actually my favorite map in Dead by Daylight, and that's the game. Anyway, like always, there's timestamps in the description, as well as the timeline on the video should be broken into timestamps as well. But, um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into the game. <laughs> well, you fucking tried, didn't you? So before we talk about tricks and tips and how to loop the game, we need to talk about the size and shape of this map, and this is something we're going to do for every video. Something that I think confuses survivors in the game is that even if they know where something is, they don't remember how to get back to it, or where it was, or what it's near, or they don't recognize the very specific types of tiles and what's re always related to being above or below them. So let's talk about that. The meat packing plant or the game consists of a 4x4 four four tile area on two different floors. So that's 16 tiles on the top and 16 tiles on the bottom. Most of these tiles if not all of them, are attached vertically, which means whatever's on the top, if you know what is usually below that, that's what is below that. There are some exceptions to this, like where the stair tiles are. There's so many stair tiles that technically there's no way to know exactly what's below it, but the corner tiles especially, and certain drop down tiles that can spawn in the middle, basically they always have the same thing underneath them. So as soon as you know that much, you know different tiles. And so now let's talk about the different tiles that you're gonna get the top and the bottom. The first room we'll talk about is the control room. And the control room always has the bathroom and the basement below it. This tile is super strong both on the top and the bottom because on the top you have two super safe pallets and on the bottom you have two god pallets. Of course on the bottom you also have the basement and of course the bathroom is a dead end tile that you don't really wanna be caught in because basically the killer's gonna get a free hit unless you have head on or something like that to use the lockers inside. But let's focus on the top floor. It has a vault and it has seven lockers um, and including one of probably the least used lockers in all of Dead by Daylight, the locker that's actually in the little control booth. The last thing I'll say about this tile is number one, the upstairs pallets are pretty safe. And you know, I would never say to waste pallets, but I would definitely make sure that you don't run into this room and just literally waste these pallets right away because this is such a strong corner, especially if the downstairs pallets are still up during like late game things. With that being said, the downstairs pallets are also considered god pallets and they're right by the basement. So these can be considered like shack pallet with the basement in shack. Like this is a very important pallet. I would say if you're downstairs near these pallets and you have other options, do not waste these god pallets. In fact, I would even say if, the, if it's not like late game, and you're full health and you actually don't have any other options, I would probably just take a hit and run past these god pallets because if somebody gets put in the basement, those god pallets can be super, super helpful and it's just not worth wasting them right away. But uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this tile. So now we'll talk about the stair tiles that spawn on the edge of the map. And this is gonna be a little bit of a longer explanation because there's a bit of a mind game depending on what the pallet is. First thing that I'll say is sometimes there's not a pallet on this tile at all but usually if there's not one upstairs, you can be pretty sure there is one downstairs. And if there's not one downstairs, there's probably one upstairs. Again though, it's not always like this. Sometimes you do get super unlucky and you get one of these stair side tiles that doesn't have a pallet at all. It's pretty safe to assume that if you don't see one up top, there's probably one downstairs. And if there's not one downstairs, there's probably one upstairs. There's never both at the same time. And there is sometimes nothing in either spot at all. With that being said, let's talk about how to loop these tiles when there is a pallet there. If there's a pallet downstairs, in my experience, that pallet usually doesn't get looped. Um, usually you just eat up distance with something nearby and then when you just get to the pallet when you know the killer's getting close enough to hit you. You could though technically loop around the square that is the stairs to where the pallet is, I guess. But with so much wall breaking your line of sight, the killer could easily moonwalk mind game with their red light or do something else to confuse you and potentially hit you, um, wasting the whole looping this area strategy. So typically people eat up distance with like a couple of boxes that are sitting nearby or just running in a weird way, making the killer think you're going up the stairs. 
whatever you need to do to waste a little bit of distance and then just try to make sure you get the palettes done to utilize the palette as much as possible. That's for the downstairs palette. The upstairs palette, when it spawns upstairs and not downstairs, can be compared to the Badham Preschool two-story that we talked about in the previous video, which is gonna be linked in the description below, where the killer has the opportunity to take a shortcut by jumping off the ledge and onto the stairs to cut you off when you're looping around because it's typical to loop around this stairway spot. A good strategy to use is to loop this area clockwise because of where the pallet spawns. If you loop it counterclockwise, the killer is gonna cut you off from the pallet and force you to eat up distance, which if you have enough distance or if you respawn quick enough, you can run back around to the pallet, you're fine. But um, if you just loop it clockwise every single time, the, kill the only time the killer can cut you off is when you're literally in the pallet. And if they do cut you off and you didn't drop the pallet, you're totally fine. You're going to get a free stun basically, or just at least a free pallet drop, in which case the killer either one has to kick the pallet or go all the way around the pallet to catch back up to you. It's not a good idea to panic vault any pallet, which is when you vault back and forth really quickly to avoid getting hit by the killer from either side. But specifically with this pallet, you don't want to start panic vaulting it. If you drop it and the killer is on the stairway side, you should always immediately run. Don't play around this pallet, even if they don't kick it, in my opinion, because they can always take that shortcut and cut you off. With that being said, I think I dragged this tile out a little long. So if you have any other questions about the shortcut the killer can make, I recommend giving it a try with your friends or, you know, playing killer yourself on this map and just trying to cut off survivors as best you can. Anyway, next tile. The next tile we're going to talk about is this sort of um, like drop down tile where you go up the stairs and there's a vault to go downstairs. The first thing I want to say about this room for all the like blend up players out there is that there's like seven spots in this room to hide. Actually, there's probably like four or five spots. Little tiny corners that I wouldn't, I would personally never go in, but some people's play style is to kind of hide. And so I should mention that this room is full of corners where um, totems can also spawn in some of them. The general rule of thumb for this room is to run right up the stairs and vault immediately. The killer has two options, either they're going to vault directly behind you and if they're close enough you're going to have to use the pallet downstairs, but if they're far enough away and you vault right away that might not be a super good idea because there's usually a nearby tile that has a drop down near where you're going. So if you have like a, like a fucking crazy amount of distance, I wouldn't recommend jumping right away, but there's like a sweet spot between them being close enough to almost hit you and uh, far enough away to flank around and go downstairs another way and cut you off. Other than that, the downstairs literally just has a pallet, sometimes a hook, and occasionally a totem hidden like behind in the corner or something. Not much to be said about this tile, just a basic filler loop. You would run in a circle around it, whatever. Pretty self-explanatory and uh, yeah. This next tile won't take long. It's just one of the door tiles where the shelves spawn. Sometimes there's a pallet in between these shelves, but not always, just like everything. In this case, there's no like downstairs equivalent because the downstairs, there's no way to like directly access the downstairs for this tile. So there can be any random non hole in the ceiling tile below this tile. Typically, since it's at a gate, there's a pallet at the gate. Going with the theme of the least used locker in Dead by Daylight, this is definitely the least used vault in Dead by Daylight. I don't think anybody even knows this vault exists. Holy shit. I'm not even gonna waste any time on this vault because it's garbage. That's all I have to say. The next tile we're gonna talk about is this one that has a sort of trap door that drops into a jungle gym. The jungle gym that it drops into can literally be an L wall or a long wall, just like normal jungle gym spawning does on other maps. Uh, the difference here is that the wall with the pallet is noticeably shorter and uh, that's, that's really it. Like this drop used to be super good when you could uh, drop down and cancel stagger by jumping into a locker or hitting the window just right. But uh, now there's a nerf where you get stagger duration no matter what, and then you can vault. It's not as good, but you can still, if you have enough distance, do that kind of thing. Anyway, long story short, uh, aside from the drop, there's nothing really to do upstairs, but once you are downstairs, you can loop the jungle gym just like you're looping any other jungle gym, like we talk about in the first video linked in the description below of uh, how to loop. The next corner tile we're going to talk about is this stairway, like this L stairway tile. This tile, I want to say, always has a pallet upstairs on one side of the stairway or on the other side upstairs, but uh, I've been wrong before. All I can say is I've never seen an instance where it doesn't spawn. This tile also always has, in my experience, a pallet downstairs on one of the sides, either where you see it now 
or over here on this side. There's not too much really to say about any of these tiles. I'm basically just trying to cover all the little details. And a little detail about this tile is one, I recommend looping it up top. Just like if you have enough distance just to run in a circle before you use the palette, unless you know about a less useful palette that you can get to with the remaining distance, of course. But there's this small spot on these boxes that you get stuck on for no fucking reason if you hug it too tight. It's like your head fucking hits it or something. It's the dumbest shit in the world, but it's something you have to know about. And then obviously downstairs, it's important to keep in mind that the thing about the palette downstairs is if you drop the palette with yourself towards the corner and the killer's on the outside, you're basically zoning yourself. Like if the killer kicks that palette, you, you barely have time really to go anywhere. You want to run in the side that doesn't have a palette, get the killer to go in that way, and then slam the palette with them on the inside. That's something to do with what's called zoning, which we haven't really talked about yet but I hope to cover this in a future video when I find some things to group it with. The next tile we're going to talk about is this weird palette drop down into a TNL wall tile. And again, all the tiles I talk about are attached vertically, which means whatever's, whatever tile you get on the top, if you know what tile is usually below that, that's what's below it. The, again, the only exception is when you have a tile that exists with multiple options underneath it, like... Um, like a stairway tile that could have like, but even the stairway tiles, most tiles underneath the stairway is like basically the same thing. There just might not be a pallet down there, essentially. Anyway, the most important thing to say about this tile is that um, you basically just run around it until you eat all your distance and then drop the pallet to go downstairs. If you have enough distance and you don't need to use the pallet, don't use it. Just drop downstairs and use the TNL wall but you have to have enough distance to account for stagger. And so usually if you're in a chase, that's not, you don't usually have that much distance. Um, one weird trick that I've seen some killers try to do is if you come from a certain direction and you have enough distance and they anticipate that you're gonna literally waste the pallet, they'll go around the other way and try to swing over the gap to hit you on the pallet. And I've seen literally, I did this twice on a Freddy where he just fell down the hole and I watched him fall because I pretended like I was gonna drop the pallet and then ran back through it and he swung from the other side and fell down. So I doubt you'll see that ever in red ranks, but uh, maybe you're not in red ranks. Maybe you got a big brain killer somewhere, but. Anyway, the downstairs is literally just a TNL wall. One thing to, well, a couple things to notice is all the fucking points that like jet out. It's basically like a TNL wall, but with spikes that like, just take a good look at these walls know where the spikes are understand that they break line of sight sooner since if the killer wants to go around they can break line of sight sooner with you so technically these these specific tnl walls have more mind game potential for killer in my opinion but as long as you don't run into anything and you just keep your eye on the killer and uh you kind of learn how they play you should be fine just using this like a normal TNL wall, which again, looping TNL walls is in my first video that's going to be linked in the description below. Next few tiles we're going to talk about are particularly boring tiles, um, but none, but there's still tiles that I feel like I should mention. The first one's going to be the van door tile. Um, this is the door that doesn't have the vault. All that it really has is a pallet. There's also like a wedged location that's like a dead end next to the van, which most players have played like at least three times or something on this map know that that's there but some newer players might not and they might get stuck there i don't know if, if the killer chases them they might run down that way for some reason and get stuck there used to be a totem spawn in there but i'm pretty sure when they reworked the totems it doesn't spawn in there so maybe comment below if you still see totems I've, I've never seen a totem in there since they fixed that but other than that in front of this tile is the like table tile it's just like a wooden table that can sometimes spawn a pallet next we have the downstairs tile that sits underneath these again the tiles that sit underneath a non-hole tile are usually pretty generic just like the other doorway tile was sometimes there's just four pillars and some boxes and nothing to really use in that room sometimes there can be a pallet in this room i don't really know what the rng is of that maybe it's completely random i'm not really sure but um anyway the tile here is usually pretty bare. The other room I should probably quickly cover is like this um, like red room with two doors. This tile is completely useless. It's so useless. There's, I mean, if you have head on, which I usually do run head on, it's a good tile because you can run in here and kind of just hide for a minute with quick and quiet or something. But other than that, if you're a blended, I guess, and you're not in chase, you can hide here, but there's nothing really to use ever on this tile. The other box room that I should mention is the cooler room. It's probably the most useful of the ones that I'm listing in this segment of the video. 
but um, the cooler room is basically like a long wall. You can get a fast vault from the inside, although the meat kind of blocks you a little bit, so you might want to give it a couple tries. But typically when I use this, I run from the outside to the inside. The killer will instinctively run around, so most of the time I just slowly vault back. You can kind of treat this tile like shack. If the killer chases you around the back, you can just instantly vault the window again and get three loops out of it if you play it correctly. But sometimes if there's other resources nearby, I usually just quick vault in from the outside, slow vault back out. By the time the killer notices, yeah, I've already got a little bit of distance on them. I'm probably made it to the next tile, next pallet, um, whatever. And then we have the upstairs shelf tile that can spawn not only just on like an edge, but it can also replace one of the corner tiles. These shelves usually have a pallet either between the back shelf and the wall, or sometimes it's between both shelves. There's a pallet sitting there. Again, this is just one of the random like kind of filler tiles that can spawn either on the corner of the map, replacing one of the tiles that I've shown you already, or it can just spawn on one of the edge tiles, maybe even in the center, but I don't think I've seen it in the center. Yeah, that would be weird if it was in the center, but most of the tiles that I just mentioned contain filler pallets that we already talked about in my first video that will again be linked in the description below. I'm not gonna explain the basics in videos going further, I'm just gonna keep referring back to the first video that covers those types of things. The last tiles we have to cover are the middle tiles. There's three different types of tiles you can get in the center of this map. The first one is a tile with no hole, it's a flat floor, with boxes or whatever they'll have in the middle of the floor. There's the middle map stairways that are pretty common, usually they have a pallet on them. It's, it's not that often that I see them without a pallet, but when there isn't a pallet, there's typically one downstairs to use below that tile, just like the corner or edge, I mean, uh, stair tiles. And the third is a drop down tile that I, I feel like I see it every time I load in. Um, it's similar to the trap door tile, but this drop down sometimes just leads to a locker, just a couple of lockers. There can be a pallet down here and sometimes there's a, even a gen here, but uh, yeah, there's not much to talk about. Usually some survivors will try to make a killer accidentally fall through this hole by hugging the corner really tight or pretending to drop in from the other side and they think they can make the killer swing. But honestly, there's not too much to talk about with this tile aside from just knowing that it exists. Now actually, we should talk a little bit more about these center stair tiles. There's not a whole lot to be said about how to loop them. There's usually just like these blue crates for you to kind of run around to make it a simple filler pallet. But since it's right next to a stairway, sometimes it'll be coming up from the bottom or something and you should know about the different hitboxes and the different ways to loop this. So first, like I just said, you want to loop the blue canister things like a filler pallet. And if you loop the other way around like the gap, like some people might consider doing because they think big brain, there's a hole here, I can loop this. Just know that the killer can cut you off if you loop it the wrong way. Really the killer can cut you off either way, but long story short, you shouldn't really loop around this hole because of the killer's ability to usually have a shortcut. Even if you loop it the other way, a killer can sometimes swing across the gap and hit you. If you come up the stairs, the killer can swing and hit you. And if the killer is even on the stairs and you're on the edge, if you're close enough, he can also hit you there. Again, just a couple of hints, uh, a couple of sort of tips. So yeah, that basically covers the stairs. Now below the tile that I said was kind of flat and has the, just the shelves on it and not really anything else, in the center of the map, below it is usually what is on other maps referred to as a pallet gym. And again, this is something else that we talked about in the first video. It's just important for me to mention that this is a pallet gym and so you can treat it just the way that I said to treat a pallet gym, which is basically just as a filler pallet unless you have like head on or something. Anyway, let's talk about some of the strategies and things like that that I use when I play on this map to remember where things are and decide where to go and whatever. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is a little tip that I would use on any map, but especially for indoor maps where you get confused on which way you may have seen a certain tile or a certain pallet or really anything that you want to remember. Maybe you saw a trapper put a trap down and it was on a tile like the stairs pallet and you see a stair pallet coming up and you don't know if it's this stair pallet or another stair pallet. Whatever the reason might be, it's just a good idea to use this strategy. And that is designating a certain structure of that map to a direction and then remembering what direction that tile is from you constantly. And on other maps, it's a little simpler. Like if you get Thompson House, and you just remember what direction the main building is, you can usually see the main building from almost any direction. And if you just remember where the tiles are in relation to that, and remember where you are in relation to that, 
it can help you in memorizing what your current generation of map is that you have and what structure you saw when you ran past it, where that is on that map. It sounds kind of stupid when you think about it in terms of Thompson House, since you can see the house from any direction, but on maps like Meatpacking Plant or the game that we're talking about, it's a really good idea to designate like the control room to a direction. And in this case, I usually designate it to like the northeast corner or the northwest corner of the map, depending which corner it gets put in. Uh, because if it's put in like the southwest corner, that's the same as it being in the northeast corner. I don't wanna, I don't wanna confuse anybody, but just designate a room probably the control room because it's the only consistent room on the map to a direction memorize that direction and then memorize things in relation to that and remember your current place on the map every time you move relative to that and it will help you so much in orientating yourself in chases and knowing where you need to go and knowing what you just passed that you saw through a doorway you saw a pallet in a and you can be like what was that that i saw is it useful and, and you'll know basically when you put this strategy into words, it sounds like it's super complicated, but it's really not. It's literally just remembering what direction something is from you constantly. Just imagine like a string. It's it's dumb. It's so dumb, but I swear it's worth it. I swear it's helpful and it will help you in your chases. I promise. With that being said, that's all I really have time for for the game map. If I left something out that you think is super important, feel free to comment below. And so I encourage people to check below in case there's something that I forgot about. Keep in mind, it's pretty hard for me to get every generation of every tile. There are of course gonna be filler palettes in other locations, but by now you should be used to finding and recognizing filler palettes from my first video and figuring out what to do with them based on the information in that video. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you like me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good night, guys.